Welcome back to Improv Tips, where I and some of the best improvisers in the world give you improv tips and advice to make you a better, more confident, and happier improviser wherever you are in your improv journey. I am, as always, your host, Paul Valancourt, and today I have a really fantastic guest tipper for you, Stephen Davidson. Now, I uh, became aware of him online, of course, as I became aware of so many people lately, and he's doing some really interesting things with, with improv. He has trained and performed all over the place. He has um, a few groups of his own, and he's involved in so many more groups. All that information, ding, 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 is down below. He, But he's also an author of two books on improv. One is called Play Like an Ally, and one is called improvising gender and I think it's really a, a very timely um, sort of investigation of, uh, of allyship and, uh, and and gender meaning in improv and so I was really thrilled to have him come and do this tip and the tip really just blew me away I thought it was super interesting but before we get to that I just want to say that he's also doing an online class that starts this week if you're watching this live this week uh, uh, called um, inclusion in improv it is through his company uh, impromiscuous and he's also do, he has written it and is doing the class with Monica Gaga, who did ding ding this tip here. So it's two really great heavy hitters putting their heads together to come up with this really timely, fantastic class. So all the information ding ding is down below. If you want to check that out, that would be really fantastic. Also, if you enjoy the tip and you are enjoying the tips in general, please consider uh, liking and subscribing the video for more improv tips to come. But right now, please sit back, relax, and enjoy. Steven Davidson. Hi, I'm Steven, and my tip is about gender. So rather than thinking of your character as male or female or even non-binary, try thinking of the way that they express their gender on a scale from 1 to 10, kind of like we might with status. So for example, if you picked a 1, maybe your character expresses themselves in a very masculine way. Or if you picked a 10, maybe they express themselves in a very feminine or effeminate way, regardless of their actual sex, which is rarely relevant to an improv scene. Uh, this will give you a much wider palette to paint with in terms of characters, and it'll start getting you used to the idea that gender isn't just a binary. It's nice to note that masculine and feminine are social constructs, which means they're just ideas we've agreed on anyway. So whatever they mean to you today is the correct option. Don't worry about that too much. Uh, if you're worried about very masculine or very feminine characters becoming a little bit stereotypy, a really good hint is to give them one kind of behavior or interest that's uh, not to do with their gender or kind of an opposite gender stereotype. So for example, you might have a very masculine presenting character who's talking about their feelings or looking after a baby and it's going fine. Or you might have a very feminine or effeminate presenting character who's talking about something totally unrelated like painting or chemistry, just to kind of round out that character a little bit. Uh, we don't need to be afraid of the, the ends of the spectrum because uh, those people exist and they deserve to be on our stage as well. Uh, and nor do we need to be afraid of what lies between. So that's my tip. Pick a number. Hey friends, thanks for checking out the video. And uh, if you want to hear a little bit more, check out one of these two quality videos. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and follow us on social media. All the links are in the description down below. And let me know what you would like to see an improv tip about. Thanks for watching.